Yo, what's up guys, it's the Insane Game Freak here, and I kind of wanted to give my thoughts and impressions on Hyrule Warriors because I wanted to do this before E3, and plus that, we've had a whole bunch of information leaked out this week, which this video should be uploaded on a Saturday, but I'm recording it on a Wednesday night, therefore some things may or may not change, but just know that for the future, <laughs> that all the information I'm getting is from stuff from Wednesday night and back. Nothing from what happens in the future in the next few days. So, anyways, uh, let's just talk about Hyrule Warriors. Now, I guess I should talk about my Zelda fandom-ish thing, history, before I go into anything else. Zelda is not one of those Nintendo franchises I mess with, really, at all. As of today, as of May 21st, or well, it might be May 22nd, let me see. I think it's still May 21st. I can't lean far back enough without busting my ass because so I'm not going to do it. Uh, I have yet to beat a Zelda game. Uh, I'm currently playing through Wind Waker and I have Skyward Sword sitting over here that I haven't opened yet because I wanted to beat Wind Waker first and then I'll play Skyward Sword and then I'll like buy Ocarina of Time 3D on the 3DS. Casually kind of getting into the Zelda series. Anyways, haven't beat a Zelda game. Haven't really been too into Zelda. Uh, as a kid, Zelda just seemed really fucking confusing. Uh, Ocarina of Time seems especially confusing. Like, I don't understand how kids beat that game, considering how kind of confusing it feels. But then again, when I played it, I played it with no context of Zelda beforehand. Like, uh, Ocarina of Time was the first game I had ever touched from the Zelda series, and it wasn't even the beginning of the game. It was like the middle of the game. I think I was at the Water Temple, which is like, from, from even now, I hear, it's like one of the worst parts of the game, so... I didn't have a good first experience, so I didn't even bother touching things like uh, Majora's Mask or the Wind Waker or Twilight Princess or Skyward Sword. But Skyward Sword was the one that interests me the most. And then I heard Wind Waker had an HD remake coming out, so I was like, I'll go ahead and buy that and try that out. So we're kind of going to that. Anyways, Hyrule Warriors, which is what we're really talking about here. Now, I'll be honest, in terms of Dynasty Warriors, it's almost the same thing. I don't have any direct experience with Dynasty Warriors games. The only reason why I even know about the Dynasty Warriors playstyle like that is because of One Piece Pirate Warriors. <laughs> One Piece Pirate Warriors is what got me into the pirate, that type of gameplay, which is actually pretty fun. Granted, One Piece is not the direct Musou gameplay, but it's about the same gameplay with just a few different additions to fit more of the One Piece universe. And it looks like that's kind of what Hyrule Warriors is. It's like it's, its core gameplay is Dynasty Warrior style with like a bunch of small little Zelda gimmicks thrown in there to make it feel more like a Zelda title. Even though it's not like, I don't think it's an official title. I think it's more of like a spinoff series than anything else. Uh, one thing I saw a lot of people mention in the comments, not well not the comments, but uh, not mentioned in the video is something that just got recently released, which is some information about the story. Which is that the main, the, the, the uh, evil witch, Shia, apparently was like in charge of this Equilibrium Triforce. And the story, which actually has me a little intrigued, is she was like originally a good guy and she ended up developing a crush on Link. But because Link has a thing for Zelda, it created, it kind of, she ended up getting corrupted by it and she lost her shit and she decided. I don't know. I don't know how it would, how it actually happens, but it just seems like her crush with Link and it being that unrequited love fucked her up emotionally, and she tripped out or she was taken advantage of in this uh, emotional weakened state, and was turned evil and decided and just fucked everything up, and that's why Hyrule Warriors starts. Now, the one thing I do like about Hyrule Warriors, from a story perspective, is that if I believe so, this is the first time Link is starting. This is the first time you're playing as a Link that already has some combat experience. From what I understand, most Legend of Zelda games start with him either just getting into that role or as a child. Like, he's either a kid in most games or he's just jumping into the whole hero thing. Usually it's because of what's happened that he that causes him to be a, end up to become the hero of time, I believe, is what his official t uh, title is called. I'm not sure. Um... The thing about this game is that he's already a, he's like a grunt soldier at the beginning of this. So, I, I, I'm interested in that and also the playable character thing. I mean, honestly, I'm not going to go too far into the Zelda Mythos because I don't know enough about the Zelda Mythos. But Link, uh, when it comes to playable characters, I, I would right now it's just like Ganon, Link, 
uh, Gear Ham, Shit, Fee, Sheik, which I. I wonder if they would do the whole thing where, you know, Zelda would be able to turn into Sheik or would she just be Sheik and you couldn't play as normal Zelda because that would seem too out of place. Granted, I don't, I don't know how often Zelda herself fights as Zelda, but I know, you know, it, and I've only, I think you've only seen Sheik in Ocarina of Time anyway. Like, Sheik became ridiculously popular even though she's been only been featured in, like, one main game. At least for my knowledge. <laughs> uh, but that's besides the point. Um, I, I like the Dynasty Warriors playstyle. The game looks cool. It look, from what I hear, they're taking a lot of enemies from, like, Skyward Sword. Well, at least they're models, anyway. Uh, the, I saw the Dodongos in the trailer scene, and then we had all these new information. Uh, we found out Team Ninja has had their hands in this game, which you can tell just by the design of Shia. <laughs> I think everyone brought it up as like, yeah, Team Ninja definitely put their hands in this game. Why is that? Because this, this is the only Zelda character I see that actually has like breasts. And you're just like, yep. And if you played Dynasty Warriors or even seen Dynasty Warriors games, you already know they are all about that fan service. Now, I'm an anime fan, so that shit doesn't really bother me. But I know a lot of gamers who are just like, hey, what is that? Don't get this shit out of my Zelda game. <laughs> oh, by the way, we haven't seen what Zelda looks like in this. Uh, I'm not going to say timeline, I'm not totally sure if this is within a certain timeline, but within this game universe, we don't know what Zelda looks like, so folks, be wary of that. <laughs> um, but, you know, we know who's developing the game, you know you can switch out weapons and shit, they're doing the two player thing, so like one person can play the game on the gamepad as their one player and the second player gets the TV to themselves, which I feel like for Wii U games that's how the split screen should be done anyway. Um, I do, I am looking forward to this game and I probably will get it because I'm used to the Musou style gameplay and having Zelda elements will make me more interested in playing Zelda games in the future. The one thing a lot of people like to rage about is like, oh, they're just doing spin-offs with their different game franchises because they're running out of ideas. But to me, it's like, most people, Zelda and Metroid are like those franchises that is, I'm not going to say people wouldn't get into, but people wouldn't, people don't naturally gravitate to. Like, I don't know why people would call Zelda a kid's franchise, because if anyone's played a Legend of Zelda game or even attempted to, you know Legend of Zelda is not a children's franchise. The way that game works does not come off as a children's franchise. I'm not saying kids can't play it. I'm just saying I don't understand why Zelda always got that rep. But then again, it could be just because of the way Link looks. And also because people don't know that Link is the main character and not Zelda. Even though it's called The Legend of Zelda, Zelda is not the character you're playing as. <laughs> uh, but I always like that idea of trying to introduce different gameplay mechanics and spinoffs to make you more interested in the main product. Because that, to me, is what kind of gets you more interested that has a good way of bridging gaps. Like, to me, you know, the Musou style gameplay is like the simple hack and slash. This, you know, you have a big ass sword, these broken ass abilities, and you see a bunch of enemies that are annoying the shit out of you. You know what, I'm gonna throw a couple bombs and then just start wailing on these motherfuckers. Like, that's the kind of shit, you know, Hyrule Warriors and just the Dynasty Warriors games in general give you a feel of. Ridiculous amounts of power, and nothing to do with it but just wreck a whole bunch and he's like, I have all this power, I don't know what to do with it. Hey look, a big ass group of enemies. Well, I guess I'm gonna pull out my sword here and just start going to town on these mothers. <laughs> like, that's the kind of cool part about the Musou series. So I feel like people who want to get into a game about, you know, a swordsman becoming the hero and the adventure and everything, a good way to ease them into that is to give them a simpler gameplay style. Because Dynasty Warriors, from what uh, the biggest complaint about the Dynasty Warriors series is that it's repetitive because it's such simple gameplay. But it's like it's simple gameplay, and then you put Zelda elements into it and give it an interesting story. You can easily start meshing those fan bases. That's kind of what Pokemon Fighters is doing. Well, if that is a game, and if that it becomes a thing, that's what Pokemon Fighters can do for Pokemon. And uh, it's in its uh, fan base because it's like you have the RPG fans for Pokemon, and then you have the um, you have the fighting game fans who are like, man, I want to get into the fighting games, and you see about Pokemon, and you start bridging gaps. And so po Pokemon RPG fans, I mean, yeah, RPG fans get more into the fighting game community, or the reverse. You know, you have the fighting game fans who like Pokemon fighters who get into that. Same thing can happen with Hyrule Warriors, you know. You like Hyrule Warriors, maybe you like a Legend of Zelda game. Hey, look, 
when we're HD, <laughs> or hey look, we use Zelda, or hey look, any other Zelda game you want to try out, like Skyward Sword or uh, Ocarina of Time 3DS, and then vice versa, you know, maybe you don't, maybe you never tried a Dynasty Warriors game, but hey look, it has Zelda in it, let's give it a shot. That's what this whole cross uh, gameplay styles with characters thing is supposed to do, and I like the idea, because I'm going to pick the game up. Not necessarily because I'm a huge Zelda and Zelda fan, but I do like the Musou games. Which, in retrospect, you can kind of blame One Piece for, because One Piece crosses with that, too. Um, ironically, One Piece's Unlimited Adventure also did that for Zelda to me for a bit, because if anyone's played Unlimited Adventure, the one that came out on the Wii, that has a similar style to Zelda. Not as puzzle-heavy and technically interesting, but it's the same feeling. You were still doing a lot of shit to figure out where you needed to go and what you needed to do. It's a good way of bridging gaps for genres and seeing if you like a genre. Just because you like Zelda doesn't mean you can't be interested in the Musou gameplay style, but you never had a reason to jump into it. Hey, look, Zelda's on it. Huh, I'll, I'll give it a shot. And I like that. I like that idea. I will also have an article I'll probably be, I'll, I'll be writing within the next few days, and I'll probably up, I'll put in the link in the description. It may be out by the time this video gets uploaded, but it's, it's kind of regarding that whole Nintendo's weird cross-breeding franchises with different genres of gaming and the whole third party situation and whether it's such a bad thing or not but I'll you know you'll get into that when I finish the article and when I post it in the description anyways this has been the insane game Rick. please leave your thoughts and comments in the comment section below about Hyrule Warriors I like the idea I like the way it looks I, I'm interested in the story to be perfectly honest because I don't think the, the Legend of Zelda has really touched the love concept about its game franchise as much so, I'm interested to see how this is go. The only thing that would make this any better is that there was voice acting. That's literally, if you put voice acting in it, which brings up a question, are they going to do that? Because most Dynasty Warriors games, if not all Dynasty Warriors games, have voice acting. So, is this going to be like Link's first official voice? We'll see. And that brings up a question. If it is, does that mean they're going to use his voice for the Wii U game? We'll see. Anyways, this has been the Insane Game Freak. Life's a game. Play to win. And I'll catch you guys later. Peace. Uh.